This is tutorial 19 of fluid mechanics. I will teach how to apply linear momentum equation and energy equations for strange velocity profiles. So today we will perform some integrations. Our first example is in fact a radially uniform velocity profile. So this example is not really the focus of today. But let's solve this problem anyway. So let's suppose the anchoring force is fx, fy, and then fz. And we also let this as beta. Then if we write down the linear momentum equation along x direction, and of course this velocity does not contribute to the x direction of anchoring force. So we just have to integrate along this curved surface area, name is C, and pick any point on this curved surface. Say this point, then its velocity is going radially upward like this. Then the x component of velocity goes this way. If this is V, then this is V cosine theta. And this is rho. This velocity points radially outward. So this V dot dA is just the magnitude of the velocity times the area. And then we can bring all the constant out. But looking at this curved surface area, if we are taking this point, then dA is something like this. And this is the height, b, and we move by a small angle d theta. And this length is r d theta, if this is r. Then we plug this in, and theta varies from 0 to pi. And we move all the constant out. But remember, for cosine curve, it looks like this. And the area here exactly cancels out, so this goes 0, and fx is 0. Similarly, for y component, we replace the u by v. And v is of course v sine theta, so that will become... And if we plug in the values, which is non-zero. This result makes sense since we observe the velocity is symmetric along this line. And all the things going in this direction will be cancelled out. But there is nothing to cancel out the component from this direction. Now we enter the focus of today. For such a non-uniform velocity profile, we cannot pull out the velocity as constant as we did in the previous two videos. So, let's see how we can apply the linear momentum equation for such a velocity profile. Let's let the velocity as 1 as w1. Our first task is to express wc in terms of w1. So, we apply the continuity equation, and we copy v down as surface 2. A surface 2, the normal vector points this way, that is, the normal vector is k. So this becomes 1. Now the integral becomes an area integral. To do this, we draw section 2, a thin ring here, so that the ring has radius of r, and its area is dA equals 2 pi r dr, where dr is the thickness of the ring. And the radius goes from 0 to the radius of the section, and we substitute in dA. And we pull out the constant. To do this integral, we do a change of variable. Let's let this guy as u. And we substitute all the things into the integral.
But V1 here is W1 and area 1 equals area 2 equals area of the pipe. So this cancels out. And the center line velocity is. And we continue our task. Let's write down the linear momentum equation in the z direction. And at area 1, the velocity profile is still uniform, and we can pull out the velocity. It is negative because it is going into the control volume. And we let this integral as i. As in the previous slide, this dot product is just w, so i is just... And just like in the previous slide, And we pull out all the constants. And we apply the same change of variable. But what is the forces on the set component? Let's draw the control volume of the liquid. This is the weight of the fluid and the frictional force from the surface, also the pressure force. And only this force is pointing up, all others are going down. So But W equals gamma volume and volume equals area times height if this is the height h. Then we can write down and we cancel out all the A's. And this is our pressure difference. So we add a subscript here, avoiding confusion. And we are done with this example. For the same velocity profile, let's see how we can apply the mechanical energy equation. So let's write down another form of the mechanical energy equation. Where the useful energy is. Since only one is the inlet and two is the outlet, we can expand this integral to become two parts. But now, all these terms are constants, and only this term is not. So we can pull out the constant as we did as in the previous video. And we let this ugly integral as i. Also, this term is negative since 1 is going in, this term is positive since 2 is going out. So we continue to simplify. But i is this integral. And V, the magnitude of the velocity, is just the W. And again, this dot product here becomes W again. So we compute this integral in the next slide. So we compute this integral, just like in the previous two examples.
and we apply the same change of variable. We get this useful expression. This formula is wrong. This bracket shall be here. So we substitute in the previous expression. Actually, this is already a useful expression for the loss in available energy. Since we can measure the pressure difference, difference in elevation, and the velocity. But then, in the previous example, we also obtained an expression for pressure drop. So we can continue substituting. Again, h is this distance. So this term cancels out, and we can calculate the coefficient for w1 squared. So, And this is our expression. From these two examples, we see that we cannot perform analysis as if the flow is uniform. We must perform integration for non-uniform velocity profile. To simplify the analysis, people define two correction coefficients, one for linear momentum equation and one for the energy equation. With the two coefficients, we can use the energy equation and the linear momentum equation as if the flow is uniform. The only difference is to add the coefficients here. So, let's see how we can really apply the momentum coefficient. Here, the velocity profile is parabolic. In chapter 8, you will learn that this kind of flow is called the laminar flow. Let's write down the set component of linear momentum equation. And W2 is average. We consider the mass balance, we must have mass 1 equals mass 2. Furthermore, since A1 equals A2 and the flow is incompressible, then we have we can factor all the things out. This is 4 divided by 3 and is written down here. And for section 1, the velocity profile is uniform. So this is 1. So this is just Again, we have the four forces acting on the control volume. All area are the same. Again, this distance is h. And this one is rho aw, so the a cancels out. And P1 minus P2 equals This is our expression. We see that using coefficient is much more convenient. Then we look at our final example. Although the fluid is air, the change in pressure is just a small value. So we can assume a incompressible flow. And then we first assume uniform velocity distribution. So we have our original mechanical energy equation. And we further assume that the gravitational effects are negative. So this term goes out. And mass flow rate equals rho AV.
and for velocity too. So we can plug in all the values. And then we repeat our analysis with the actual velocity distribution. And we are done with this example. So today we look at control volume analysis for non-uniform velocity profile and how do we use alpha and beta as a shortcut. In particular, these two alpha values will prepare our discussion of major losses in chapter 8. So thanks for watching and feel free to ask us any question and give us any feedback in the comments.